Well, hello guys, welcome back. I might untether to go get my pizza. Ugh, pizza. <coughs> Excuse me, I was doing Fun Time Freddy before. And that did not go well. Um, I always get attracted to trying to do these voices on the channel that, you know, they have very talented voice actors. And they're, they make the voice sound so easy because it's just a natural voice for them. Like, um... My Chica, my Foxy, and the like original 4 or 5 I did for my channel, the FNAF channel, were easy for me because it was within my range. But then I always need to kind of push myself, and I shouldn't. And I know the voices are bad compared to the voice actors, but it's done as a joke on the channel. Anyhow, I've been watching FNAF 6 goodies and, you know, one of the... Actors, the one that does hand unit, he does a voiceover in FNAF 6. Um, starts talking about the game and starts talking how it was teased and everything. And he starts segueing into another surprise that came at Christmas. And I already knew what he was on about. I, I, I had him. And he starts talking about Jesus. And I, I knew he was going to do this because, one, it's a kind of a common trope for a lot of Christians when they do something and it's okay. Because remember, at one point, I was a tensely hyper-Christian. I could have beat you with a Bible. <laughs> yeah, I was. Because I was going through the, this isn't right for me, but I'm going to make it stick, so I'm going to be intensely hyper about it. Did not work for me. Worked for him, so it's good. And I did not mind it, but it made me think, you know, we do have a vastly different take on the games. I've always wondered where Scott is coming from sometimes. I forgot that for Christians, it's good and bad, black and white. You know, God is over here, Satan is over there, and, you know, never the point shall meet. And it kind of gave me some insight into some of the characters. Um, naturally, as a Lokina, I'm going to have empathy for the bad guy. I'm going to have empathy for Springtrap and Purple Guy. And I'm going to have empathy for, you know, the um, animatronics that are possessed by the children. And they're just coming back for revenge. They're just like tiny little children. I'm going to have empathy for them. And Scott has always played his cards close to his best. He's never said, really, if he sees... The children is evil. I don't think he does. I don't think he sees anyone based on the ending, the true ending to FNAF 6, as evil except for Springtrap. And it, it kind of made me realize we do really see things from a different standpoint because, you know, um, the ultimate evil is finally defeated. It goes up in purifying flames. How fitting. And the monsters, as the children are referred to, the robotic salvaged animatronics, um, they're told to let go of the souls they have because they're not theirs. Now, a fandom is, of course, probably going to push back and say, but the, those are the souls that chose to live in them, and da-da-da-da. And I don't know. It's... The storyline of Freddy's has always been so nebulous. It's always been so open to open ter interpretation, and Scott left it like that on purpose. But it just really hit me that how different they must see the game than I do. Um, how different Scott, the creator, must see the game. How different the voice actors. I don't know what all their religions are, but I know the one, you know, the place hand unit was re referring to the birth of Christ. And how different they must see this time of year. I, I Now, I grew up Roman Catholic, but calling Roman Catholics Christians is like calling a VW a Porsche. They're both cars, but they're vastly different. <laughs> they really are. Um, I remember... When we had friends growing up that were Christians, and they would, you know, they'd be Methodist, Lutheran, whatever, and they would refer to Catholics as Christians. And Catholics would just look at them as refused, because 
confused because we never referred to ourselves as Christians. We were always Catholics. And we were proud to be Catholics because we were the first and we got it right. <laughs> I don't mean to offend anyone. I swear to the gods. And it just, it was interesting because it made me wonder, I wonder what they get of other people from other religions, you know, playing these games. What the other religions besides the big three, because they, they pretty ha much have, I'm not saying they're all the same religion, but they pretty much have that good evil as far as I understand the lore, the good evil thing, though, like from what I studied at Judaism, it's more like the evil comes from with man. It's just our own natural inclination to do bad things. And as Lokians, we would say, well, yeah, it is our own natural, you know, feeling to do what we feel like, but it's not always in the pagan sense, you know, wrong. It's just do as you will, and it harm none, including yourself. So it, it just, it was something I kind of wanted to comment on, and I will put this on the Lokian channel, because, you know, um, I personally don't feel, I tried before to have all one channel, and it did not go well, so I personally feel I have to kind of keep the two apart. So sometimes you will see video content, or video game content, rather, you know, bleed over here as I'm discussing, you know, a viewpoint as a pagan, because I can't put that up on the main channel. Oh dear. No, never. But it kind of made me, you know, think, because I know from how I was taught as a Catholic, I would have to be, be taught to view Springtrap as... Someone that was beyond redemption, but since as Catholics we had the gift of confession, that would cleanse the soul. Now, that did not mean, as the church taught you, that, you know, once you went to heaven, you were, you were clear with God. Because people always use that against Catholics. It meant you were okay, but there was a beautiful place called purgatory if you weren't bad enough to go straight to hell. And I... I often would ask questions that would get me in a lot of trouble, like if you've been through purgatory on earth, does God have mercy? Uh, I can tell you the Catholic answer is that is heresy, but I think the pagan answer, especially the Lokian answer, would be that yes, the gods do have mercy. If your whole life has been a battle, um, I've seen it very beautifully said, if your whole life has been a battle just to survive, you go to Valhalla. Um, you know, sometimes you have to fight just to survive. You don't have to fight on a battlefield to be fighting a war. Sometimes you got to fight just to get out of bed every day. Or just to survive or put food on the table or whatever. And we do have our own way of looking at things. So it just, it just kind of made me think, that's all. And I wanted to share that with you because if I didn't film it now, I knew I would never get to it. And it, it just, it interested me that Loki's willing to work with that format because, uh, you know, it's no secret that Scott's a Christian designer and I, I've never thought either way of it. I've always played any kind of video game. And when I was hyper-Christian, I played a ton of Christian video games and they usually sucked because they were terrible. But Scott is like the first Christian programmer, openly Christian programmer, that has made a success of himself. And I think he did because he turned away from that hit you over the head with the Bible 30 seconds. If there is a Christian meaning, even have gone to a Catholic university, I can't quite find it. It's more of that dark, dark, dark place you never hope to have to go to, <laughs> but it seems common to all of humanity, regardless of race, religion, dot, dot, dot. So, if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.